Hey guys, Adam Trigger here, Wager Talk, another college basketball preview, and I've got one of my good friends joining me today, ACC specialist, we'll call him, big time Virginia fan, but he's joining me to talk about one of the other Virginia schools, the Virginia Tech Hokies. Welcome, Aaron Kidd. How's it going, Aaron? AK Sports 90 Trigger, on Twitter. Are you ready for college basketball season? Trig, I am so ready, man. Thanks for having me on, and I can't wait to talk about the Hokies and just a little bit about the ACC in general. Yeah, so let's get right into it. We uh, we went to Castle Coliseum together last year, saw Virginia Tech play Duke. I, I want to just mention one thing quick because not I, something I've really kind of started to realize over the last couple of years, I've now been to like 45 different you know campuses, different venues. Not all home courts are created equal, and not everyone that you think has a home court edge actually does. I think that term gets thrown around way too loosely. I think it's something that if you're a sport, a college basketball better, um, you really need to know because you'll see lines move. You know, you'll see teams get three or four, four points in a college basketball game on the number for quote unquote home court. And some of these home courts matter. Some of these don't. I was really impressed with Castle Coliseum. <clears throat> I, I definitely think that that is a venue that there's a little bit of an edge in. It's unique. They always seem to pack the place out. AK, was that your first time at Castle? And are you kind of like in agreement there that that's one maybe you give them a little home court bump when they're playing at, at Castle Coliseum? Yeah, Trig, that was actually my third time at Castle. I've gone up there and watched UVA play them twice and then uh, got to enjoy the Duke game with you. It's definitely a home court advantage. It's it's kind of an interesting gym. It's kind of dark in there. It gets really loud. It just feels like the crowd's on top of you. So, yeah, man, definitely it's always been a home court advantage there. UVA has always struggled on that road trip going up there. That's going to be really interesting this year because I, I always have a hard time quantifying home court when maybe the team is not historically what they usually are. And that's what I feel like Virginia Tech might be this year. So we have to set it up it, like this. Virginia Tech lost a ton from last year. And I think that's really been their issue. Um, you know, maybe the last like last year and then maybe again this year. Mike Young, in my opinion, is a guy that that needs his team to to have some continuity from year to year. AK, if you remember when Mike Young took the Virginia Tech job in 2019, came over from Wofford, he basically went against the whole transfer portal thing. He brought in all his guys. He brought in a bunch of freshmen and said, I want to build this thing out from the ground up. That first year, I think he actually overachieved going like 500. I remember that everyone thought they were going to be terrible, this very young team. The next two years, he makes an NCAA tournament. But last year, we saw Virginia Tech take a step back. I think some of that had to do with the, the revolving door of this roster. And now we're seeing it again this year. So, AK, I'm looking at the roster. I see a lot of names that aren't there last year. And that's a concern for me. So as much as I like Mike Young as a coach, that's the, my, my biggest concern with this Virginia Tech team and why I kind of have him maybe near the bottom of the league. Talk to me about Mike Young. This is a guy you followed during his days at Wofford. And can he overcome this? Or is this a team that's finishing near the bottom of the ACC? Yeah, Trig, I have. I've been following Mike Young for a long time. He really had that Wofford program. He kind of put the SOCON back on the map. Uh, you know, he upset a, a number five North Carolina. He comes back the next year, goes to the NCAA tournament. Uh, kind of beats the brakes off of a pretty good Seton Hall team in that tournament that year. And then, you know, it, it was kind of one of those things you just knew the big job offer was coming. I thought it was a great fit for Tech, but you are right. He's a guy that, you know, we talk about all the time. He's an older school coach. He likes to grow his team from a recruitment standpoint, have him for three to four years. And, um, yeah, as far as the roster turnover, I mean, the core three, which has been Hunter Couture, Padula, and Lynn Kidd, uh, Couture, of course, graduated, no more eligibility. Padula's down in Ole Miss, and Lynn Kidd is now going to be playing his uh, former team twice this year in Miami. So a huge roster turnover, and, and I think we have to mention that – one of the two big guys that he did go out and get was Miller from Temple. And we saw what happened with that yesterday. You know, he was really supposed to be the guy. He was supposed to be the guy that could go out and get you 18, 20, maybe even more a night that like Padula used to be able to do. And now they don't have him. So you're kind of just stuck with Ben Burnham, which Burnham is a, a you know, a transfer from Pat Kelsey in College of Charleston. We've seen him play some meaningful basketball games over, you know, the last three years. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife. He can rebound the ball. He averages over a block a game. He can spot up and shoot a little bit. But 
I, I don't see another guy on this team, Trig, that can really go out and score. So where with Miller at the helm, I kind of had this team pegged around 14th, maybe 15th in ACC. I think this might be one of the worst teams in ACC this year, Trig. Yeah, and you want to talk about some more bad luck for Virginia Tech. So uh, we're filming this about 24 hours after the Heiser Miller news that he's no longer with the team, no longer with the program, presumably, you know, due to his involvement with the Temple betting scandal. And, you know, this was a team that thought they were going to get Jordan Ivy Curry at some point over this summer. He ends up at UCF with a better deal. And I'm kind of with you. I'm seeing a roster that looks very thin. I'm not saying Mike Young isn't a genius and he can't potentially, you know, milk something out of this team. But what I do think, AK, and this is something that you, as a better, you're going to really want to monitor with this Virginia Tech team. I think this team is an injury or two away from being a total disaster because I'm not seeing a ton of depth on the roster. You lose Miller, which, uh, you know, was probably going to be your biggest creator offensively, biggest playmaker, probably your best scorer. And there's just no depth here. So I'm not saying that Young can't potentially hang with his starting five, but there's not much after that. And, and so I agree with you. I've got this team near the bottom of the ACC. I do want to talk about, so I, I also think it's an important point to make, Aaron, and, and I want you to weigh on the, in on this as well. I'm going to be very interested to see where the books have this team, right? Like are the, are the books taking, because obviously it's known that Heiser Miller will not be with the team. So are they going to take Virginia Tech and make them like the bottom option in the ACC? Or is Virginia Tech going to get a little respect for the name on the front of the jersey right here that's been a pretty good team under, you know, it, d during the young tenure, back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments, you know, were, were competitive at times last year. That's my biggest question mark. Uh, weigh in on that. What do you? How do you think the books are going to approach this Virginia Tech team? You know, I guess, we'll, and, and the nice thing about that is, Trig, we're going to see right off the jump. You know, they play in the Fort Myers tournament. You're going to have some good basketball teams in that tournament. Um, I know they start off with Michigan, and then uh, they'll probably have Xavier in the second game. I know we're going to talk about that Xavier team in another preview we do, but I think that uh, we're going to see right off the jump how the books price them. Um, you know, I will touch on something with, about Mike Young, though. Mike Young depends on guys that can really screen PNR and then guys that can kick out and, and shoot the ball from there. I don't see a guy that can shoot the ball from this team, right? I feel like they're going to try to depend on getting the ball down to Burnham and, and, and Rodney Brown, another transfer from Cal. I think I think he's going to play a part in it too. But besides those two guys, Trick, I just don't see a lot of depth at all. So I, I, it, it could even be a, a – I know this is a betting show. It could even be an angle where without their lack of depth, it could be a team that if they're up in the first half or they're hanging around, could be a team to fade in the second half of games. Yeah, I very much agree, and I think you nailed it. I think, um, you know, if you look at Mike Young's teams years past, he really likes to have that that one shooter that's just a furnace – that can hit a lot of shots, a high volume of shots. I think he needs Ben Burnham to be that guy this year. Now, I'm not saying he can't be. I mean, he's a he's a pretty good three-point shooter, about 37% from three, averaged 11.9 uh, points per game for Charleston last year. But that's an awfully big ask now to do that in the ACC on a team that that doesn't have much else around him now that you take Miller out. I mean, that's that's, you know, he was probably going to be your top scorer. Where I do think Virginia Tech improved, and I want to give them a little credit, is on the defensive side of the ball. Something that you and I, so we actually got to see Virginia Tech twice together last year, AK. We, we saw them play down in Raleigh against NC State. And I know one of my, our biggest criticisms of this team last year was letting teams get to the rim pretty much at will. The Duke game that we saw in Blacksburg, I mean, they just went to the, to, to the rim for fun whenever they wanted. Uh, easy buckets at the rim. Virginia Tech goes out and gets Tobu Lawal from for, from VCU. I definitely think like him and now you know the emergence of Poteet give Virginia Tech a little bit more rim resistance than they had last year. But does it make up for the lack of scoring? I think that's the biggest question mark with this VC, uh, with this Virginia Tech team. No, you make a great point, Trig. Uh, uh, Toby, as we'll call him from VCU. I uh, yeah. you know we actually got to see him play last year when we saw VCU. This kid is athletic. He's long. Um, he can, you know, he's got, I read where he's got like over 50 inch vertical, so he can block shots. But once again, 
that's great. You can rebound the ball. You can play defense. But as we've seen over the years, college basketball is going more and more to you got to be able to score. Uh, that's why some of these older school coaches are getting out of the game. So um, I, I definitely think this is a team that I won't be looking to play on necessarily. Probably play against, but, but like you said, we've got to see how the books are going to think because I'm, 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 I'm wondering if the books are thinking how we're thinking. Uh, I feel like they they may be, and, and if they weren't, AK, you, you have to think that they may almost over-adjust now that the Miller exit is so public, right? Like, that's something that, let's say Heiser Miller left the team under normal circumstances, it might not get as much traction. Every media outlet is now going to cover Heiser Miller, kicked off the team, what is, you know, betting scandal temple. It's going to get a lot of traction at, you know, in the coming weeks leading up to the season. Now, I do want to throw one thing out there that I think is very interesting. Go back to the 2019-2020 season when Mike Young took the job. Early in that year, he had a bunch of freshmen, and Virginia Tech was priced as this nothing option, and he overachieved big time out of the gate. It wasn't until ACC play that that Virginia Tech team kind of started to get exposed just for not having a, a ton of depth, not having – you know, really like a bunch of ACC guys. So I'm not necessarily going to come out of the gate trying to fade v, uh, Virginia Tech. And that's because I respect Mike Young. I think you told me offline it's it's kind of a big year for him at this program. It it's almost feels like he needs to overachieve. Now that feels borderline impossible with the hand he's been dealt. But could you see like maybe this team overachieving in conference play and then maybe being a fade in ACC play? Not yeah, I mean, play. It, it, okay, okay, sorry about that. Yep, it goes back to Mike Young is a great coach. And great coaches usually figure it out with the hands they're dealt. We've seen it over the years with the great guys. Um, and, and Mike Young, you know, has done that. Um, as far as being a fade when it comes to conference play, I'm, I'll definitely be looking to play against them. You know, even with the core three, we'll call it, with Couture, Padula, Lynn Kidd over the last couple of years, he's still 18 and 22 in conference play straight up. So, um, definitely uh, has not figured out the last couple of years, just hasn't been fluid. Um, and, and when I told you that it was true, you know, I have a lot of, um, for G Tech's in my back door, it's two hours away from me. I have a lot of friends, unfortunately, that love this program. And it's not that they have the pitchforks out yet, but they really want to see what, what he's going to do with nothing, really, right? That's kind of what their expectations are. They lost everybody. Couture and Padula were just household names. They loved them in Blacksburg. And so, really, <clears throat> it, it's in Mike Young's hands now. And um, I, I still think that my read on this team is correct. I just think this team is probably going to be a bottom feeder. Um, and, and I know I'm sure we'll talk about the scheduling at some point, but the schedule and didn't do them any favors either, True in conference play. Talk to me about that. That's something that's, that any – if you're betting mm. ACC basketball this year, and really like a lot of the bigger conferences, but the ACC is now a 17-team league, and the conference is really such that like outside of the top couple teams, that middle, it has a lot of teams that are very, very similar, like could finish fifth, could finish 11th, 12th, 13th. None of these teams are playing the same schedule. So talk to me about the Virginia Tech schedule. How, how you know, why are they at a disadvantage in, in relation to some of these other ACC teams? Yeah, just a few things that I highlighted. Uh, New Year's Eve, they've got to go to Duke. They've got to come back home and play a tough Miami team that I think is going to be pretty good again this year. Um, then what I'm very curious to see, because we've kind of seen it with this year with college football, is how do these ACC teams break and then go to the West Coast? Right. We saw it, a couple yep. of tough scheduling spots for football teams. Well, we're going to see it with basketball this year, too. So they've got to come around, come back after New Year's Day playing Duke. Then they've got to go play Miami back at home. Then they've got to go on a West Coast road trip, go to Stanford, go to Cal. They've got to come back and play uh, North Carolina State again, who's always tough. I think Wake Forest is going to be tough this year. They've got a couple of really good players, uh, guys that are going to be in the top of the league when you're talking about best players in the league. Wake Forest. And then later on down the road to end the season, they've got to play Virginia, Miami, Louisville, Syracuse, and North Carolina. Yes, uh, they get a couple of those games at home. But, man, that's a gauntlet when you're talking about an ACC. When you come back from you know playing on the West Coast, playing a tough conference, you, you already know they're not going to have a lot of depth. So I think we kind of touched on earlier in the program, but 
man, one injury away and, and you're starting freshmen yeah. and, and unproven guys. So, uh, definitely didn't cut them any breaks. I mean, that, just that last, the end of season playing Miami, Louisville, Syracuse, and North Carolina, who I think are going to be four of the upper echelon teams in this conference. That is tough. Yeah, I agree. I, I could, I wouldn't be that surprised if, if Mike Young has this team starting a little bit quick, just knowing that, you know, you got to also, AK, I think it's, it's really important to point out. When you're betting non-conference basketball in November, December, every coach is in a different spot with with where their team is, with how important those wins are. And for a guy like Young, he may be trying to win those November, December games. Like, Not that they're all not trying to win, but I think he's coaching without a doubt to win those games because he has to know that this could get ugly in ACC play. And I think that's how I want to wrap this preview up. I think it's a great way to approach Virginia Tech this year. I'm not looking to go against them in November and December necessarily when the market is down on them, when the Miller injury is highly or Miller uh, exit is highly publicized. But what you know, as this season goes along, if they overachieve even a little bit early, probably some really good betting opportunities to fade this team as they get into the bulk of that ACC schedule, which looks to be very difficult and they look to be very undermanned. So I'm going to wrap our preview up right there. We have a bunch of these over on the wager talk youtube channel so please like and subscribe and check out the other previews we're going to have 30 um when it's all said and done across the country a lot of good info in those you can follow me on all platforms at adam trigger wt and i've got a great special for you for college basketball season it's my entire season at the lowest price we're going to offer all year using coupon code trig cbb that's t-r-i-g CBB right there on your screen. Head over to my hyperlink, wt.buzz slash AT. It's the full season, one low rate, lowest rate we're going to offer all year. Thank you to my guest, Aaron Kidd. He's going to come back and, and take a look at UConn with me. So check out, keep a lookout for that one as well. And um, yeah, appreciate you joining. We'll see you guys next time.